Alrighty. Oh, my camera's over here, but my stuff is over there. Maybe if I move it, let me see. I want to at least look like I'm looking in the camera. <laughs> is that better? I can, oh, I yeah. I can see you yeah, just fine. Really I was going to say, I'm looking straight ahead now, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's see. There we go. Wow. Rhea says that she can see us, but she can't participate. Oh, no. So I had to ask to participate. Like I had to yeah. hit that little button. Yeah. I'll send that to her. Okay. okay. I think like William Smith upper. is with us providing technical assistance as needed, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. You got your work cut out. Yeah, I'm, you. I'm working on it. Uh, we'll have to get back with, with you on um, Rhea's issue, but stay tuned. Y'all can get started, though. All right. I'm just curious if we're able to know how many participants we have. That's four right now. Okay. <laughs> I think we should I think we should give it just a few more minutes to see if more people enter the room. And if not, we certainly can have a conversation amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. I got all kinds of good notes. We can have a great conversation. Yeah. I look forward to it. Nice chat. Maybe Stan can provide me some clarification on one of the questions about the pipeline. Oh, uh, yeah, basically. But, and, and, and that's what everybody's doing right now. They're attempting to create a pipeline uh, that will feed, uh, uh, or should I say shrink this overall workforce gap that we have. The, mm -hmm. issue, the, the issue is if you, it, it really depends on what's. Well, wait, Stan, don't get started time. yet. We wait in a few minutes. Don't, don't tell oh. me yet. <laughs> Okay. He was about to dive right in. <laughs> well, I thought that's, I mean, that's fine. I thought that's what I was. Uh, um, then you can regurgitate it or say it later on. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's okay. I had, yeah. I, well, yeah. We basically okay. have until ten after four to have a conversation, and oh, if okay. there's three people or if there's fifty people, I want it to be constructive. So I say, Stan, don't hold back. If y'all want to explore the concept of pipeline while we're waiting for anyone who might want to attend the breakout session. So I would encourage you to go ahead. Is this session being recorded? Like, are they going to broadcast it? Later? I don't think so, but I would check okay. with Mr. Smith. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is uh, right. not being recorded, but y'all, okay. you know, have, have the best conversation you, you yeah. can. Go for it. <laughs> okay. See, everybody so far, Yolanda, just to just to spread, you know, spread the gospel here. It, everybody so far thinks that it's there's one hammer to fix this problem. And it's not true. It's not true because there's a great percentage of this generation uh, that is flatly refusing to go to college. They they don't want the they don't want the debt. They don't want to waste the time. Um, um, they're 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 more into instant gratitude and fitting in almost immediately. So we're going to have to work with them, I believe, as early as sophomore and, and junior year in high school. That's why oh, it's got to start before then. Sure. Now, it's and another thing, yeah, you can't, you can't expect somebody to have sat for four to six years, uh, that is to say the undergraduate and the graduate degree, mm -hmm. to fill your shoes, Yolanda, or my shoes. You can't do that because, yes, you've got one heck of a, um, um, a tool bag of knowledge, but other than that, you don't have uh, skills, abilities, or experience. You so do do you believe that they have to go to college in order to work in cybersecurity? Because I, 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 I don't believe that. No, I, I I don't either. So so what's but what's happening is see we're you and I and Dr. Purser we're showing up on stage with people. Uh, that are higher education or Department mm -hmm. of Education or whatever, and of gotcha. course their path is the is that's the right path. Right. And that's not true. It's not true mm -hmm. because not I, true for everyone. Right, and 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 so then the next question of that usually is okay. Uh, when I recruit, where should I recruit from? Shouldn't I recruit from college or university? Yes, but 
Um, there's such things as tech school. There's such things as yes. people who have done stackable certificates. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a certified information uh, security ha uh, <laughs> risk response handler. I'm yeah. a risk manager, so on. They've got all these stackable things, and they've also been in internships, and they, they, they've taken lower level cost or pay jobs. And, mm -hmm. and so they're building not only the ability, but they're building the skills. And, and, and in those internships, they're getting the experience. You see, because... Oh, so let me, let me give an example of what I mean. So my niece is 17 now. Mm -hmm. She cracked my mother's laptop mm -hmm. when she was probably 11. Mm -hmm. Being, you know, her mean self, went in and changed all my mother's passwords. Mm -hmm. oh. But I knew that she had the aptitude for yes. this type of work. Yes. But she was young. She was like 11 years old when that happened. She lives in D.C., you know, inner city, and the opportunities are not there for that. She's looking at college like that's out of reach. Yes. And I'm, I'm trying to explain to her it's not out of reach, babe, but you just have to think out of the box on ways yes. to get there. Yeah, for, for there. instance, it, it, have you read, oh, that, that, this is a silly question, but there's a document called the NIST NICE, N-I-C-E, mm -hmm. yep. uh, National Initiative for uh, Cyber Education. Uh, mm -hmm. The bottom line about it is go in there and read the roles, the job descriptions to those exactly. roles. And maybe she does not have the college or maybe she mm -hmm. she's just getting out of high school or whatever. But there's roles in there that she could fit in right now and start mm -hmm. growing and growing yeah. and growing, you know, because there are, there's a lot from of us. Old. So yeah. from, her, from her perspective, Yolanda, what is the next what would be the next step? for her. You know, so well, I will it. say, I'll, I'll tell you about my experience. I'll make, keep it brief since we only have a short amount of time, but I knew, I knew two things when I was in high school. I wanted to be in the military and I wanted to work in IT. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to get there. Um, I enrolled in ROTC in high school and that got me going as far as going in the military. I joined the army and the army said, oh, okay, you scored well enough on your ASVAB. So I started out as a developer. But had I not taken that route, I don't know what I would have done. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so that's perfect. That's perfect because that's always been one of my answers too. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Yolanda. Uh, but we don't stop recruiting uh, just in colleges and universities. Start yeah. recruiting um, the separation briefings at these military schools and military mm -hmm. bases and things Definitely. like that. Go to the tech schools. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to these challenges that these folks have and. These are the places that you recruit from, people that have already uh, figured it out. Not everybody is college bound. Yep. Military is a great way to go. Now, now I, I get a lot of pushback on that because people say things like, I don't want my daughter or my son going in. What if they have a war? I, I get it. I, I get it. Well, Honestly, it depends yeah. on what your MOS is as well because I never deployed. I, I agree. I, I mean, I, but that's I, I, was, I, and I can't. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't predict the future when it comes to that kind of thing. Yep. However, I will say this to you. I served in the United States Air Force proudly. And um, war, the only, the closest I got to war was I opened up the newspaper one day and go, oh, wow. Look, they're going to do something in Afghanistan. Okay. Let's but I don't want to give people a false impression that that couldn't happen. It definitely can. Right, mm -hmm. right. But that technology is a great way. It's a great way to be injected into this cybersecurity yes. workforce. Uh -oh. Because it'll give you the, the training that you need and yes. the experience you get to work on it. So by the time, you, even if you only did, you know, two or three years, by the time you got out, you would yes. have some experience, probably a clearance, depending on which which uh, field you go into yes. in the military. And th that's a leg up, like yes. right out the gate. Coming and you into get to the travel. You and get you get to travel. travel. Well, world. I don't know about the travel because I ain't get to travel that much, but. Oh, well. <laughs> so it sounds like Military is a pathway oh, to be able to get into this. Yes. But is. what it, are there are there other roads that could be that are within reach or accessible that other federal agencies could do to pursue or to create these pathways? Well, there's, I think there's a, a well, there's a new internship program for uh, uh, DHS and CIS. I think you should look that way as well. If you're a federal employee or if you're not a federal employee, take a look at the USA Jobs website and 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 see if you can actually check some of those boxes as far as criteria mm -hmm. and qualifications and things like that. And also, unless you're terribly lucky, tremendously lucky, um, don't shoot for the two hundred thousand dollar a year job. 
just not just, out the gate. That's not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> not like there are some of us that like I came right out of the Air Force, and our entire separation class was recruited by AT and T Bell Laboratories. Whoa! And 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 here's what they told us: it was a great sales pitch. I'm going to double your salary. And we thought, double my salary? Oh, my God. They go, and you've got a clearance, and you've got all this and that and the other thing. I'm going to double it right off the bat. Now, how does that sound? And silly us, we're like, wow, we, I'll take it. So, Stan, there's another program, and I don't know if it's still in place. It was definitely in place in D.C. when I was there. I don't know where, you know, other organizations or cities have it. But they would take children, I think they started at like 14, and give them a work permit. Yes. And depending on what you you know wanted to do or what you qualified for, you would work in the government. They would hire you on as like a GS1 or GS2. But yes. yeah, again, and every summer I did that. It was another way to get experience. Um, mm -hmm. But you, you have to. And that was one of the things that I wrote down that you have to ask for it. You have to show initiative. You have to volunteer. Sometimes you got to volunteer to get the experience that you need. And, and those are kids here in high school. Yeah, yeah. We, well, there's a program called how do we Year Up. Reach out to them so that they know that the opportunity is there. Mm -hmm. yes. um, we, we use the program there's... called Europe.org in at the state of Georgia. And we received yeah. at least a half a dozen uh, folks that came from the Year Up organization. And and Dr. Person, I gotta tell you something. That what I loved about them was they were hungry. Mm -hmm. And they also understood, yes. Well, Mr. Gatewood, I'm not going to I'm not going to make as much as you right off the bat. But doggone, this is fun. This mm -hmm. is interesting. It makes a difference. Um, I'm contributing. Um, and it's right up my alley because I get to play with a computer every day, all day. I'm like, hey, I, you know, hang in there. This is it gets better and better. And and so we then took them uh, um, um, and hired them into the state. And now I'm tracking some of them, and they're 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 now moving. One of them actually made it to analyst. <laughs> okay. And, and he, I tell you, he couldn't spell analyst when I first met him. <laughs> but now, what do they say? I I couldn't spell anal analyst, but now I are one. I'm like, oh, okay, never never mind. Don't don't go, in, don't go into the speaking part, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we got somebody that said, hey, Ria. Oh, he's <laughs> asking her to go ahead and uh, type uh, comments and anything that she wants to say. So. I think this dives into another one of your questions, Dr. Purser, is about um, getting into the high schools and showing people like me. I didn't see somebody like me coming to our school and talking and saying that this is a career option. Mm -hmm. Like, so it would definitely help for us to, you know, get out there more, expose, you know, CISA and and the diversity within CISA as far as men, women, you know, women of color, all that type of thing. Just getting out there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I think you're right. They've got to be exposed to it because what they're what they know now is not always the truth or the absolute way. They just they they need to be. You just need to go forward, and and they're already hungry. I know they are. They're hungry. Uh, they're thirsty, and you've mm -hmm. just got to get in there and say, you know. A lot of I remember a lot of students were saying, I don't want to go into cybersecurity. I don't want to go into IT because it's, it's I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to program. I got it's a lot of math. That's what I get. Yeah, from. And I'm like, well, there's more to it than that. And, <laughs> and the document, the nice or the NIST nice document will tell you this. But I, we've got you know, to get there's nothing to be afraid of. So I, I try not to steer them toward, you know, you might not have to do that as opposed to. Don't be afraid of it. You never know what you can do. I used to tell people all the time that I hated math. Math is not my subject, but I love statistics. So th there's different routes that you can go, you know, mentally to try to learn your learning style to figure it out. So don't don't steer away from math. Just kind of look at it in a different way. So um, back to your first question about the pipeline. I'm sorry. I, I got notes all over my page here. Hey. Um, and one of the things, because I actually looked this one up, and one of the things that they said was, for um, to set expectations and look at requirements versus the actual job, because mm -hmm. you may have somebody that is working in administration, but they may have some of those um, soft skills like, you know, critical thinking, problem solving type things. And they mm -hmm. have the aptitude to move into a cyber field if the job is willing to offer, you know, OJT or, you know, maybe um, 
hire them on and send them to school and they have a service commitment at the end. But all the, <laughs> there you got somebody behind you. Um, <laughs> so oh, that was one of the things I was looking at the requirements for these jobs. Sorry, Stan, I'm all over the place here. The choir, requirements for those jobs. Some of them are ridiculous. Like okay. you say you want, you know, a vulnerability management person, but you want them to have CISP, you want them to have CAF, you want them to have a CPNA, you want, <laughs> and then you don't want to pay for it. So that and that's, and that's why I'm preaching here today that read the NIST nice document. Yes. In that document, when you when you see the job descriptions in, in that document, mm -hmm. you you won't always see that that platinum certification of CISSP. You won't right. say it. You won't say it. And I, I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. Um, so it's 250 questions, six hour examination, and 75% fail the first time. And that's quite discouraging to a lot of people. It really, really is. But read the NIST NICE document and they'll tell you as far as qualifications are concerned and certifications and things like that, there's nothing wrong with A plus, security plus. Yes. There's nothing wrong with the, the, the lower ones as well. As long as you can show that you've got some knowledge mm -hmm. and demonstrable skills. Demonstrable skills, yeah. Come on in, come on in. And all I need, all I need for you to be is honest with yourself, mm -hmm. um, ready to learn and hit the books and work hard. And yeah. and what they told us when we went to at and was, and we also love your loyalty, your structure and your stricture and the fact that you've got a clearance. Come on in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do Have you observed other models where there was specific outreach to young people and there, and you did see a measurable impact in terms of, you know, specific programs. I think Stan mentioned Europe.org. Mm -hmm. Are there others that seem to be able to do it well? So, do it right? I wouldn't necessarily say um, a program like what Stan mentioned, but when I was working for the VA, they had a secession planning uh, team. And so they would take, you know, a lower level GS employee and pair them with a mentor that was, you know, GS 13, 14, 15s and above SESs and because they were getting ready to retire. So in yeah. order for them to fill that that gap, and I think that was one of the questions that you asked about filling the, the, the knowledge gap in there mm -hmm. is to take these people and train them up before those folks retire. So yes. you have to be looking at the retirement dates for some folks and say, OK, you got you know, three years before you retire. We, we're going to give you a, a mentee so that when you do retire, you can exchange some of that knowledge with them. Yes. Because right now, <laughs> they're just gone and the knowledge is gone with them. But Jason called it that tribal knowledge. It's, it's gone. At the, my retirement at the state, they, 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 that's, that's almost all they talked about was we cannot find somebody like you next week, next month, next year. We just can't do that. I'm like, well, it, it, the thing about it is you, you need to start early. As mm -hmm. you said, start early with these people, let them shadow, let them mentor. Yes. Um, and, 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 and just follow along with somebody that's already done this because my group, meaning my age group, there's, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I, every day I look at LinkedIn, there's a bunch of us who are getting ready to check that box. Which yep. basically means I'm I'm headed home. I'm I'm not in a bad way, but I'm I'm headed back to the farm. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm out of here. And to think that you're going to fill what they know and what they can do, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. Especially but, not with somebody fresh out of college or fresh out of right, the military. Right. It's just not. Somebody said it perfectly at a conference, uh, um, and and Dr. Percy, you were there too. It was the uh, Fulton County uh, Cybersecurity Summit. Somebody said it perfectly. Um, um, well, they, they, we've got a lot of knowledgeable individuals coming out of higher education. And I, and I replied and I said, not to be argumentative with you, but you can't just give me knowledgeable and mm -hmm. expect it to work. I have, I have hired so many folks that have had the undergraduate, the graduate, the PhD, you know, so, on, so on and so forth. And, and yes, they are smart as can be. Mm -hmm. But when I say something along the lines of, guess what? I need to now put in a belt and suspenders type of network that will guard my perimeter. I need for you to be able to write scripts so I can stop people from running alien and foreign applications. Um, I need, and they look at you like, uh, hang on, I, I did that back when I was in, you know, when I was a sophomore, yeah. I did that back when I was a junior or whatever and go, but have you ever done it for real? Because I can't release code. I cannot allow code to be released 
mm -hmm. based off of a test you took five years ago or something else. Uh, so yeah. it's, 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 so what I said to the person was knowledge without skill does me no good whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. I have to have somebody that can at least, if they want to code, let them code. Uh, if they want to have hands on and get into a firewall intrusion prevention or, or help me sit down and help me write a policy. I really want to know what is your reading and writing skills when it comes to this? What does your grammar look like? Um, maybe maybe you can start there. I mean, I would have loved to have somebody to be able to um, uh, um, uh, write some of the policies and standards. Some Sometimes I had to pay people to actually write, to go outside and get a third party to, to write my policies and things. But it, it's, so, it's tough. It's tough. So usually when I, when I go to mentor somebody, they'll come and, and ask, you know, how do I get into what you're doing? And I'll give them one or two things and I'll say, well, do you want to code? You know what? There's a book out there. I think I have it on my desk over here about uh, learning PowerShell in 30 days, mm -hmm. learning Python in 30 days. Let me mm -hmm. see what you do with that and come back to me in 30 days. Yes. So many YouTube videos because I need to know that I'm not wasting my time with you. Like mm. if you really want to do that, you need to be committed to it. Go watch you know, a few YouTube videos. They have all kinds of SISM, SISP, you name it out there as far mm -hmm. as YouTube videos. And that'll tell me what your dedication level is. Yes. So then I'm willing to commit. Okay. Yeah, we can we can sit down and kind of really talk about it. Until That's right. then, no. That's right. I'm with you. I'm with you. But but you know that that I don't want to discount the the undergraduate, the graduate, and the PhDs. I don't want to discount that at all. They're 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 wonderful candidates if they can show me exactly what you just talked about. The soft skills and the yep. pure dedication. And I want to, and I'm, I don't mean to sound like a, a movie here or some sort of sci-fi, but I want to look into your eyes and I want to look into your heart. I want to see if you, like you said, go look at these and then cut that code for me. Yeah. And if they don't show up or they come back with something like, oh, I've got three lines of code. Okay, <laughs> well, what, what is that going to do for us, you know? Oh, well, yeah. um, I got Here's started, but I got kind of lost because you didn't give me all the criteria. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I did. I did have this thought is, um, you know, I'm personally daunted by initiating a recruiting program so that our staff have to spend all their time or a lot of their time recruiting. However, mm -hmm. I do feel like we should do some recruiting. And I feel like, um, you know, we, we want to create a pathway early on because mm -hmm. if we only recruit at colleges, then we lose a lot of potential yes. um, cyber operators right. um, who are in high school who have the aptitude. But I wonder if there are ways that we could, what do you all think about recruiting, let's say at Atlanta magnets or charter schools in inner cities that, mm -hmm. you know, focus on cyber yeah. where we have a magnifying effect where there's already an effort to get that going with the mm -hmm. school. And then we come in there and say, Hey, we're a pathway where you can do a paid internship. Mm -hmm. I totally love agree. It. Be great. Love it. Love yeah. It. You know what? Cause then there's like a synergistic effect where that charter school or that magnet is already, you know, working with kids, um, you know, for minority or other communities that mm -hmm. may be under underrepresented in cyber and working with them to, to, um, to help them get those, those beginning skills for cyber and also to like increase their appetite for mm -hmm. that as a career field. And then yes. so Yolanda, they've already kind of passed that first check, you know, of your box for their right. dedication. Right. Mm -hmm. but definitely. Um, yeah, they definitely have passed it. I know a lot of the high schools offer like a robotics program, yes. and but not everybody can get into the robotics program. It depends mm -hmm. on, you know, your financial situation at home, whether you can afford to go to the yes. little competitions right. and things. So people are fearful when it right. comes to that. So it needs to be something that is affordable, <laughs> hopefully free, or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe scholarships that they can get in order to get into the program. Mm -hmm. And yes. for that, maybe write an essay or something why they want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. to, to get a scholarship awarded to, so that would be my suggestion as far as inner city trying yep. to trying to I, get. I did money. a I did a, a chat. Uh, oh gosh, it's been years ago now, and it was so funny. You know, the first question they hit me with, and these are these are K through twelve folks. I mean, I'm talking maybe ninth and tenth. Um, mm -hmm. 
So how much do you make? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Straight I, out I, the I, you know, I had all this all planned in my mind. Everything was oh, yes. and it was structured and I was doing through this process and I was I was headed somewhere. Well, how much do you make? And I'm like, I'm not about to divulge my salary to you. I can't do that. But I will tell you this, that, uh, you know, I'm I'm not hungry. I'm not <laughs> right. Hungry but, but they, they want to the know. The mind of the 15 year old is simple. <laughs> That's it. Hey, let's cut Very to the true. chase. How much do you make? You know? So, but I, 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 I then went on to, I, I, I listened to the crowd, I listened to the audience and I said, you know, they, they have these questions and, and I, like I said, I'm not going to give you my salary or anything like that, but I've got to shift gears as far as inspiring these people now mm -hmm. and, and tell them how, how much it's been so rewarding and, and to be able to uh, um, um, see the ladder and start climbing the ladder mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. And it's, I, I, their, 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 their mindset changed altogether. They got to a point where it's like, tell me more, tell me more. And then the teacher stepped in and said, hey, you know, I, we can't have him all day long. He's got to go back mm -hmm. to work and everything. But that's what you're going to have to do. Rhea's comment. Because they're, I'm sorry. They're, um, they're asking, have we seen Rhea's comments? Oh, no. Nope. Sorry, Rhea, we didn't see them, but I see them now. Where, where um, are they at? Okay. Rhea's cool. You see them? She, uh, the first one was absolutely joy. Start with the schools. Build it into the curriculum. Yes, create summer internships to develop skills and foster their interests. Yes, exactly. Um, she also mentioned that the University of Texas in San Antonio recently won a grant to develop awareness programs for K through 12 that is intended to foster the latest talent pipeline and begin creating potential internships once they're able to work. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, uh, yes UTSA. Out of San Antonio, yes, that's my old alma mater. Yeah. Uh, we have another comment from uh, Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra. Okay. Says, okay. Uh, "Yes, Yolanda, Georgia Tech has such programs that come with scholarship opportunities for kids. Awesome. Oh, good. 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 Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, Rhea. Just... I didn't. I didn't scroll up. She has a whole lot of comments in there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Where's it at? I wish you I'm could sorry. get in there. So if you click on stage instead of okay. backstage, you'll be able to see the her comments in there." I can't even see it because I'm on my iPhone. I oh, no. I can only That's see right. the three That's of us right. on yeah. camera. I can't see any comments. I don't even know if anybody else is able to hear us. Yeah. Um, oh, we're really? just That's having true. our little yes. conversation. We're like the view, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, no. <laughs> In Rhea, you're right. The road, road, my goodness, the road runners. Gosh, that, that, that brings back memories. Brings back memories. <laughs> beep, beep. Yeah. Yeah. UTSA. What are, what are some okay. more ideas, Yolanda, please? Uh, let's see here. She also, so let me start with at the top here. Uh, Chad wrote, I love the outreach across the company here, listening towards 50 plus employees on five councils, super inclusive. Uh, Lorraine said, oh, I don't think that was for that. Chad also mentioned the initiatives you're putting in place are really impressive. What will it be like to integrate Bank Corps South into your initiatives? So oh, I'm not tracking what those initiatives are, but <laughs> maybe y'all can speak on that because I don't know what the initiatives were. What, what was it again? Repeat that. Uh, the initiatives you're putting in place are really impressive. What will it be like to integrate Bank Corps South into your initiatives? Bank Corps South is a mm -hmm. is a company, correct? Mm -hmm. A large financial. It's a large company. Yep. Yeah. I think we were supposed to have a. Um, uh a panelist who was oh okay was it yeah so, okay. so some, somehow these programs that are in existence or people that are building these programs they've got to get the word out there or they've got to get the word to us or something so we can you know turn people their way so i think yeah, the hardest thing for me was uh finding internships and programs like i know mm -hmm. when you go to usa jobs they have um one really good one was palace acquire the um, air force program um, mm -hmm. When I was working for the Air Force as a civilian, yes. my manager actually got into that program and she moved down to McDill, but she was she was trying to get me in that program. She loved that program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was taking junior level GSs and, you know, putting them in step positions where they could get up to a 13 or a 14. Yeah, so it was, it's a, a pretty good program. But they, I know they offer some of those for Army and all of that, too. The two yes. comments. I remember when I was in high school in yeah. Cochrane. I felt like 
I was really grasping for straws for opportunities for money, for scholarships. Where can mm -hmm. I apply? Because I had time and I had the interest and the commitment to to do those applications. Mm -hmm. um, but I just I felt like I didn't have like a good guidance counselor to show me those pathways, to show me the way to those things. So it would, it would be nice, you know, when I worked on the Hill, National Science Foundation had scholarships for, you know, greater minority inclusion in areas of science and technology where minorities are underrepresented, like mm -hmm. physics yes. or like technology. And I wonder if NSF, National Science Foundation, has some kind of pathway scholarship mm -hmm. or something like that where it would be nice if if. And this may uh, occur, this may be resident in CISA. I'm just fairly new at CISA, but if someone has sort of a list of those scholarship opportunities available mm -hmm. at what level for cyber, you know, to, to help young people get into cybersecurity careers, does that make sense? Yes. Definitely. Maybe so, NIST so has one, or maybe NSF National Science Foundation mm -hmm. has one, maybe Department of Energy Office of Science, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But it would you know, be nice to have that list in our hip pocket when we go to high schools to recruit. So um, not, a dig we're going the, that. not a dig on the high school counselors, but I know it was part of my experience. And both of my sons had a, a similar experience where the counselor had their favorites. And wow. those students were the ones that they would tell about the programs that they knew. It wasn't something that was readily available to every student. Right. So if you're going to do something like that, I would hope that it would be something that would be beyond the counselor. I don't want to exclude mm -hmm. them from the process, but something mm -hmm. that, you know, is put on a bulletin board or something that everybody can apply to, not just mm -hmm. their favorite. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing, too, I think we, we should do um, and we could start start in Georgia uh, and work our way, uh, work our way through the entire region. And for that matter, around the around the U.S. itself. Um, we need to have more conversation with the university systems. Uh, mm -hmm. That also includes mm -hmm. the technical college systems. I know mm -hmm. that. Um, oh, that's a great be, idea. It would be a great. It would be a great discussion just to see you sit down with TCSG, Technical College System of Georgia. A great conversation if you sit Ooh, down. With you the have good connections there too, don't you, Sam? Oh yes, and the Border Regents University System of Georgia, and and um, mm -hmm. not only that though, there, but also some of the. Um, uh, some of the private schools as well, the, the Embrys uh, uh, and, and the like. I think that's a great way to start and, and tell them, you know, as far as as far as some of these programs are concerned, how do you reach out uh, uh, to the uh, K through 12, and how are you how are you recruiting at an earlier age, and and, mm -hmm. and what's it what's it look like? Because I I tell you that Yolanda hit the nail on the head. There's a lot of them, I'm sure, are thirsty and hungry, but they just they'll they'll never hear about it, or Mm -hmm. immediately eliminate themselves if you show such a, a super large dollar exactly. figure. Like, mm -hmm. not only that, I've got to, I've got to somehow catch the bus all the way across town to get to Georgia yes. Tech. Yes. Or I've got to get out to Augusta where, where mm -hmm. uh, a few of the uh, Georgia Cyber Center people are doing this, this, and this. And that's tough. That's tough, you know. So, but if you talk to them, they're going to be able to, uh, they're going to be able to help you write down exactly what's happening at every one of these schools at all these levels. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just go, we then go target. Like I know right now, Augusta is reaching out into K through 12 out in the Augusta area. Uh, mm -hmm. and they're targeting the STEM schools out there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that, that's a great idea. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I wish you could reach out a little bit further than that. Uh, and especially if they, if the students have a laptop, they can do something online. Mm -hmm. do something yeah. Right yeah. Right. yeah. Go ahead, Yolanda. They, the students have laptops now because of COVID mm -hmm. and all this, they you sure know, do. <laughs> doing yeah. school from home, they've given them laptops. Yeah. They could utilize those you for know, other things as well. You, you brought up something that that's sort of a, a, a corollary to, to that to the whole thing. Think about this too. What we're also we're expecting the teachers to be able to teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The teachers are don't get me wrong, they're qualified and they're educated and they're 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 experienced and all that. But you, we have to tool up and grow some of these teachers to be able to teach the cybersecurity stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, and it's it, and it's easier said than done. It really is. Mm -hmm. If I all of a sudden create a curriculum for cybersecurity that includes the ten domains and all that good stuff, will we be able to find the teachers? To yeah, teach and is there yeah. a valley of death? Because my son is 
nine years old and he's well on his way to coding and he's like mastered multiplication exactly. tables because of a video game. Yep. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is, is really that mine, that mine talk to children mine really early. Game? <laughs> yep. Minecraft. Is it Minecraft? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, one of them. Yeah. that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know who's leading the way with that in the state? That's Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, yeah, they were yeah, the first I, to come I, up with I'm a gaming degree. That audience comment about Georgia Tech. As mm -hmm. my alma mater, I think I should be able to reach out to them and see what some of those programs are that yes. we can also partner with. And also with Bancor, yes. since we have the fintech industry here in Atlanta and the financial yeah. you know, security transaction industry, seems like um, that would be something that they would also be eager to mm -hmm. participate in. So we could be a force multiplying entity. We so, so mm -hmm. could. Well, hopefully we won't just keep it in Georgia. You know, I'm in Florida, so. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and, and I, and I <laughs> talked to Dr. Purser about this already. I, I really okay. believe that if we do it right, yes. then we do exactly like we do cybersecurity. We multiply it, uh, um, um, well, we, we, we repeat it, uh, we continue to measure it and we roll it out to entire region four. And then after that, Dr. Purser makes her connections back home to, not back home, but back in DC. Mm -hmm. We spread it everywhere. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen this happen in Texas. When I worked on the Hill, there was a group from University of Texas System, which had an excellent team of lobbyists. And they said, listen, here's one thing that we did in Austin is that we provided an option for African-American minority teachers or students in college who were going down the teaching route to teach math or engineering or science. And we said, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, who were, um, who were going to become engineers or mathematicians, scientists, and say, you are excellent um, in, you know, in your progression here in school. Would you be interested in teaching this to young people in inner city schools? If so, you know, we pay for the rest of your education to become um, ed certified. Yeah. And then the repayment is that you spend a couple of years in the classroom mm -hmm. in, a, in a, a lower income area school. Mm -hmm. And they were able to measure the impact on the excitement of the students when yeah. they encountered a teacher who wanted to become an engineer, wanted to become a mathematician, who was truly like passionate about the subject matter and inspired them to uh, those students to then also pursue those careers. And they called it the you teach program. Yes. And national science foundation uh -huh. expanded that program uh, in other places uh -huh. because it had measurable success in okay. you know, changing the face of these, um, these professions. Roy Hadley said, can you can you see the the comments, uh, Doctor Person? I cannot. Okay, so oh, that's right, you're on your phone. So so Roy Hadley said, "Hello, everyone. Great session. Okay, Georgia Roy. Tech is great, uh, but a lot of other schools have great programs as well. For, you know, across Georgia, Kennesaw State, University of North Georgia, come to mind, which is true. Mm -hmm. We just need to get the word out there and meet with these people and find out what does right look like for you. What are you What are you doing here? What are you doing mm -hmm. that's right as far as cybersecurity is mm -hmm. concerned?" And are you reaching K through 12 as well? That's so important. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Um, Dr. I know you can't see the messages here, but William put a message oh. up and said that we're ending at 410. So yes. are there any final questions um, so that we can wrap it up? I know we didn't get to all of your talking points, and I, I really wanted to because they were. But I just think the chat is valuable. I think what. That's okay. Uh, was. I do. I do appreciate everybody's, uh, you know, all the comments in the chat. And, you know, one, one thing that I was going to just share after I, you know, thanked TAG for supporting this, this breakout session and uh, CEO Larry Williams and Heather Maxfield and Rebecca Markison for inviting us. You know, I've really enjoyed this conversation with my colleagues. Yeah. I'm sorry uh, that Rhea and Cassandra were not able to get in in terms of the, the video and the audio piece, but you know, I was I was reviewing this quote by Martin Luther King. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Yes. And for us at CISA, it is so important um, to do every little bit that we can mm -hmm. to try and change 
you know, the face of cybersecurity so that it reflects that of our society. Yes. So I, I have taken that on as something that I'm really being proactive about within CISA. And we want to reach outside of DHS. Um, so I appreciate all the good um, ideas today. And please keep them coming. The conversation is far from over. We are just getting started. I'm excited about it. I know we're out of time. So feel yeah. free to reach out by email to any of us um, mm -hmm. for yeah. any kind of follow-up discussion on this. Absolutely. Yolanda, awesome. see, this was fun, wasn't it, Yolanda? It was. I'll throw my last little tidbit in there. Thank y'all for inviting me. Uh, I always have one saying, there's no such thing as luck. Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. So That's prepare right. yourself for what you want. That's right. And cyber, awesome. cyber security is blind. It doesn't see color. It doesn't see age. It doesn't see sex. It doesn't see even your ethnicity, anything. If you if you'll be a victim unless you, you do something about it and you've got to you